What's up, my dudes? I wanted to come in here and make a special little video, a little dedicated to what Jason Anderson is doing in Supercross right now. I feel like it's uh, definitely something worthy to make a video on and kind of his whole, you know, trying to be more chill and trying to get more longevity out of racing versus just, you know, trying to go super hardcore like this kind of more chill vibe, you know, this kind of whole different outlook on racing per, at the professional level. I think it's pretty interesting what he's doing, um, but I, I wanted to come in here and talk about this a little bit. So if you didn't see what Anderson put on Twitter like a couple days ago, he uh, he put on their first W, or finally got a W, FML or first W of the season FML something like that I can't even remember at this point but um what he was referring to was him is him winning his LCQ race right like oh shit dog I've not won you know I've not won a race first W of the season that's what he said he said like finally got first W of the season FML fuck my life right that's basically what he said so that was kind of comical that's funny made me chuckle a little bit when I saw that but uh yeah, so that's kind of what sparked the idea for me to make this video right here. Just kind of talking about what's been going on with Anderson and, you know, obviously 2018 Supercross champ. Has he even won a race since that championship in Supercross? He might have won like maybe one, one or two main events, maybe since 2018. So he's certainly... I don't know what's going on. I mean, I really don't. I mean, and especially this year in particular, like, he literally just looks like a mid-pack guy. Period. Like, straight up. Just, I mean, he's running in 7th, 8th, ninth place in every single race pretty much for the entire race. I'm such a legend. I just popped off twice. I'm riding like Anderson all of a sudden. Holy shit. But uh, no, I mean, it's like, and, and the cool part about this, you know, don't don't let it sound like I'm trying to just dog on Anderson, like, oh, he sucks now or whatever. What I'm trying to get at is like, even he understands what's going on. Like, he's not oblivious to it, you know? That's what I mean. That's why I brought up that, what he said on Twitter, like, you know, saying, damn, first win of the season, like, FML, you know, he brought all that up because it's like, yeah, well, I mean, what's going on, dog? Like, we definitely expect Anderson to be up there a little more, you know? I mean, I'm not saying he's going to be, like, on a Tomac level or whatever, but you certainly expect a past somebody that just won the championship two years ago to at least be a little more up in it, for sure. Um, so, but it brings up the interesting point because, obviously, uh, you know, he's kind of... He's, he's been very open about talking about where he is, uh, you know, just just trying to be real chill, just, you know, not trying to take it too, too seriously, not trying to burn himself out on it, trying to get longevity out of it. And I think that's a really cool, different way to look at it, right? Kind of being a little more free living, um, maybe not being so hardcore on like boot camp diet, all that kind of shit. I mean, he's obviously still training. He's obviously still wants to win. It's not like, you know, he's just totally not doing anything, but it's just not quite as, you know, crazy as some of these other guys, right? Um, so it's pretty interesting to, to kind of see that different, different approach to it, right? Um, I thought that was definitely a cool, cool way to look at it. You know, obviously, he's got the whole Team Fried thing popping off, which is really cool. Um, he's got a lot of different cool stuff like that going on. But it does sort of raise the question of, you know, he's not really making it look so good at the time being, right? He's not really making it look so good as far as this whole different outlook to everything and kind of just not being so serious. Oh, my God, what did I even just do? Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I think I invented like a literal in between a, a whip and a 360 and a backflip. Like, fucking, we'll just call it the Matrix, dog. That's what I just did right there. New trick, boys. Holy crap. So, uh, either way, yeah, it's kind of just like, he's not, he, he's kind of making it seem like, oh, okay, well, if you want to go in there and try to just be team fried, chilling, not be as serious 
this is going to be your results, right? It's kind of the vibe he's play. He's he's making it look like that now. So um, he's going to have to do something. He's going to have to get it together pretty quick because even though you can go in there and win a Supercross title, super, uh, 450 Supercross title, that's a really big deal, you know, and that's going to keep you a, a solid ride for at least five years after you win a Supercross title, basically. As long as you're there, I mean, you don't even really have to get good results after that, after you've already won a title, you know? It's just such a big deal that it's kind of like that, right? And I, I don't want Anderson to get in this mode where he feels like, oh, well, I've won a title, so I can just you know, do whatever the hell I want now, and it don't even really matter if I win a race, you know? I don't want him to get in that mentality of like, well, I've won a title, so I'm going to have a ride forever, you know? Sometimes it seems like you get some of the best rides. Oh, my God, that transfer was awesome, and I crashed. <laughs> that was a big-ass jump. Damn, I need to try to hit that again. That was cool. I've never actually hit that exact transfer right there before on this track. Back in the good old days of the loading screen shit. But, um, yeah, you can see kind of what I'm getting at, though. Like, I just don't want Anderson to get too comfortable, you know? You cannot do that because you've constantly got new kids coming up, faster people coming up, and before you can say, Bob's your uncle, somebody's going to take his spot. I mean, if he don't get up there and start getting some podiums and getting some good finishes, I'm not shitting you when I say... Like, somebody will come through there and take his spot, man. They really will. You got all kinds of young talent coming through looking for that spot on the 4 Fatty. So, I'm just saying, like, he better, he better start doing something. Um, but it certainly is an interesting way he's kind of going about it. It's cool to see kind of a different, uh, different way to to try to do it but i think he just needs to kind of hone in his focus just a little bit more and um you know maybe get a little bit more of that hunger back in him seems like when a lot of these guys win that first title it's just not as it's not as crucial of a thing to do it again right like i don't know it's just a weird you definitely see a different kind of rider after they win their first title 99.99% of the time, I mean, very rarely do you have like a Villapoto situation where he just goes in there and wins four in a row. You know, him and McGrath's the only one to ever do that. Um, so it's actually pretty rare to, to have that happen. Um, but, you know, now we've got Webb champ, Tomac one-time champ. All three of them boys are one-time champs. So now it's like Roxon's trying to get his one-time champ thing. And, you know, you got Cincerillo trying to be the champ. He's got a lot of these other guys, and I, you know, Anderson definitely earned it in 2018, but what I will say is, like, it was certainly played into his hands, too, right? It wasn't like he had to just demortally fight for it, like, the whole way through. I mean, it definitely fell into his lap a little bit with Tomac crashing that year. I don't even, th I think Roxon was out that year, Towards the end with crashes, you didn't have all these dudes like Cincerillo and Osborne and, and um, you know, Ferrandis and some of these guys in the 450 class at that time. Um, so it was kind of like, I don't think, I don't think Anderson's going to, going to have it that easy again. You know, it's not going to be as easy as it was when he won it in 2018. There's too much competition now. I think that right when, Dungy retired. I think that was like the the absolute prime time for these boys to go in there and win titles. And now it's kind of back to it was the prime time right there when when uh Anderson won, Webb won, and then you know Tomac won, right? But I think now it's kind of starting to get back to that point where there's so much competition again to where I don't think it's gonna be that easy. I just don't think it's gonna be that easy anymore holy we're dead <laughs> okay but uh yeah you guys definitely know down in the comments what you guys think i mean i think it's all cool like do whatever you got to do to go as fast as you can on the bike but like you still got to be getting results you know that's kind of at the end of the day if you don't get results you're eventually going to lose your ride and then you're not going to be able to do it i mean you can sit there and talk about how you just want to have fun or you want to get have longevity out of it and i totally understand that you know, I totally understand every bit of that, but at the same time, it's like, there's a point there where it's like, okay, all right, like, you need a, you for sure should have already had a podium by now, 
you supercross champ two years ago and here we are you know what five rounds in and you don't even have a podium yet i don't even know if anderson has a top five in a main event yet he might have one i don't know but um he's like i say he's just been running back there in that kind of like seventh through tenth and every single one of the races it seems like so far this year so but um yeah and and then he's now he's in the lcq it's like what the hell he's really gonna have to do something pretty quick like i I think if he rides like this all this year they may give him one more year and if he don't prove anything then it's like okay we're probably gonna have to let you go you know it's kind of like that um he just don't even look like he's even he's even going to run up with the boys in the front, to me. I mean, I know it's a crazy time of like getting good starts and track position and all that type of crap, but still, at this point, he should have at least had one race already where he was kind of up there, and he's just not really had that yet. And he's kind of been like that a little bit for the past, ever since he won the title, you know, the past couple years. So, I don't know. He's going to have to kind of wake his ass up a little bit or do something. He's going to have to do something, but um, I, he's kind of putting a little bit of a bad name on the uh, whole, like, not taking it super serious. Let's just kind of have fun and get longevity. So, And I really don't want that to have such a bad rap, you know. I want it to be like you can have these different kind of personalities and styles and the way you want to train and things like that but still be able to go in there and get results, right? So that's kind of, I hope he can pull it together and really start getting some good finishes here, but I, I think he kind of woke him up maybe a little bit with having to go to that LCQ, you know, and like, okay, we got to do something here. So hopefully it did, but we'll just have to wait and see. But either way, hope you guys enjoy these little real-life riding videos. We'll be getting back to a lot of, a lot of good shit here soon. I'm going to get to some MXGB 2020 videos uh more mx bikes videos we're getting all that shit popping off but either way appreciate you guys watching all the videos later bros